opening a public hearing on the 2020 budget. It is the 21st of May, 2019, and could we all stand for the pledge, please? I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for coming. I'm a little excited now. So welcome to the budget hearing. Um, and it's also the warrant, it technically, the, war yep. the meeting warrant yes. hearing. Yep. But um, I'm a little partial to the budget part. So um, we will go over that. I just want to thank the select board and the budget committee. They worked very hard this year getting this all together. Well, thank you for getting it early, getting it. Started. Well, it wasn't yeah. early. It's, it's going to be much earlier next year. Right. right. Other years, it's two finished. weeks before voting is when we usually do this, right? Yeah. In March. So what is a budget? I think she's talking about this. Um, a budget is an orderly system of financial control, and the difference between total appropriations and revenues represents the amount to be raised through taxation for municipal purposes. And that amount for 2020 is 2,328,276 there, Alex, because you want to get that right in the newspaper. <laughs> Adoption of the budget constitutes um, the legal authorization to levy taxes and to spend funds. And that's what will happen at our town meeting, which will be an exciting time where everybody should come out and participate. Um, the municipality, I should point out, collects taxes for both the schools, local and regional, and all county taxes, um, as well as the municipal tax. Um, it's a budget. The budget is a management and planning tool. Just because it's in the budget doesn't mean we have to spend it. And again, it's a planning tool. It's kind of like one of those things where is it, is it a rule or a, or a policy? So um, there is some room to navigate that at times but just because it got put in the budget doesn't mean it has to be spent and our department heads are pretty good about um, since Peg has uh, joined us as the finance director and myself as the town manager we have a really good relationship with the um, department heads and it's not like at the end of the year they're spending like drunken sailors so it's a good thing it's a good thing um, the difference between a sustainable budget and a balanced budget, it's great that we could have a balanced budget, but a sustainable budget is what we are, our goal is here, is to be sustainable. Um, we shouldn't have any big jumps anywhere without really good explanation and thought. I can tell you that there were a lot of interesting decisions made during the budget process this year um, that were good for the town and I think responsibly made, fiscally responsible. Um, a lot of good ideas came out of it. We have a very diverse group on our budget committee and our select board. Um, and we had a lot of good discussion uh, relating around. I think one of the best things we did was invite LCTV here um, to have that conversation um, that needed to be had about what the funding levels should be. Um, how large is the 2020 proposed budget? It's $4,959,418. Um, and I will go over what the big increases were. Um, salaries and wages increased 98,236. Benefits increased 64,181. Your personnel costs are the biggest cost drivers. 2% cost of living increase was given to employees not covered by contract. The police department got a wage adjustment and that was in order to retain and re recruit officers. Um, and the public works um, negotiated was 2%. Increases in the public safety budget reflect the restoration of the 8th patrol officer, um, which was discussed at the budget committee meetings. And I have to say, it was unanimously approved by both the select board and the budget committee to have that 8th officer reinstated. Um, the increase also reflects an additional third shift for EMS during the seasonal period. Um, benefits include workers' comp insurance, and that was our biggest increase as far that we really have to um, look at, and Peg is going to look at, um, we're going to uh, look at that next year to see what we can do about that increase. And the increase for health insurance was 7%. K-12 
Capital expenditures rose by just over $75,000. However, that includes, and it's not going to make sense until I explain it, a $100,000 increase in the paving budget and costs in public works. The capital cost of the ladder truck that had been budgeted in capital was then transferred over to debt service. So that's why our spending went up, but our capital expenditures went down because we reappropriated where that expense ended up, and that expense ended up in the debt service seeing an increase, and that represents the ladder truck. But it doesn't affect the mill rate because it was in capital, so it evened out. Um, but the big increases was about $30,000 in public works equipment, and like I said, $100,000 in the paving budget. Utilities increased almost $24,000. Um, that's gas, diesel, fuel oil, and the $14,000 increase was in water rates um, because the water rates haven't went up in a <clears throat> 13 years. So um, that's where we are. Equipment, including rental maintenance, increased about $13,000, and that includes the radio replacements, copier lease, gas and diesel, uh, not gas and, um, increased vehicle maintenance. I had gas and diesel in both places, but that belonged to the utilities. We have a new capital and debt plan. The Budget Committee and the Select Board have been developing a capital plan with projections out 5, 10, 15, 20 years, and in some instances beyond, although my magic um, ability to see beyond 20 years is a little sketchy, so I was hard pressed to figure out what a car would cost or a truck would cost in 30 years. Um, this was an invaluable planning tool for the future. How the town looks at debt and the financing it has also been discussed, and a combination of saving for items with a useful life of five years and under, and financing items with a longer useful life and higher cost would appear to be the chosen path. And details of what that schedule will look like will come out over the summer, and it doesn't translate well, but that lists our equipment, um, actual cost, replacement cost, and years going out. It looks so much better on the computer than it does on that screen. <laughs> um, I actually made a really big paper of it because I'm blind as that. But that's pretty much um, an overview of the budget. You have the papers in the back um, with a summary. I think, although it represents an increase, I think it's a smart increase. I think it's a responsible increase, and I think it's responsive to what we've heard from the public, what I hear from the public on a day-to-day -day basis of what's important to them. Um, I had a woman in my office yesterday about speeding on 32 um, by the school. Um, I think the sign that we received from the grant's been wonderful for people. Um, I think that the additional officer is going to provide a lot of the services that we get complaints we can't do right now, like speed enforcement um, is, is huge. And, and maybe not to everybody, but I think that a majority of people would like safer streets. Um, and one of the things is that the cost of overtime is going to go down with that other officer. It's going to give that shift that will be additional, will cover daytime and nighttime. So it's gonna almost be like a swing. Well, it is going to be a swing shift. So um, I thought that was a great decision. Um, and that's basically all I have for the budget. Does anybody have any questions? Fun and excitement there? On the EMS, you said it was the seasonal, for the seasonal time. What's the seasonal time for them, the summer and the fall? I would say Memorial Day to Labor Day. And really, July and August are the biggest. And, and bear in mind that although it's an increased cost, that's also an increased revenue source. So um, that's, that's that seasonal portion. I'll say it. Where everybody from out of state, like I used to, comes and doesn't know how to drive. <laughs> <laughs> um, in review of the warrant, I just want to pick pick that uh, point out a few things um, you know you have your typical questions um, and I think they're all pretty good I just want to point out yet again that the shellfish program this budget is fully funded by license fees no public funds are utilized I just want to make sure because that is now on the um, warrant um, We do have a couple of different questions that I just want to go over real quick. Um, I wonder where they are. Which article?
Article 32. Shall the town vote to declare the Waldeboro Consumer Firework Ordinance to be null and void and replace it with one that prohibits sale, ownership, and discharge of consumer fireworks in Waldeboro? So that is on the warrant. Which article was that? Charles? Article 32. 32. Page 8. That was submitted by petition. And we also have, and we have our max here, if anybody has a question. And Article 34 um, is also an ordinance amending the land use ordinance um, for shoreland zoning. That's Article 34. And Article 35 is um, an article to provide for municipal development and tax increment financing district and the development program for the district known as the Waldeboro Municipal Tax Increment Financing District. That's the Waldeboro Works article. That's the Waldeboro Works article, is what it's being called now. That's the, what the EDC came up with as the, the name Waldeboro Works. It sounded so much better than having a TIF. Um, so we're going to do Waldeboro Works. <laughs> so if anybody has any questions, um, you can get through it. Uh, if we, if we want I mean, to. that's what we We can. There's only there's one no, year we didn't. There's no reason we can't. Do what? go through the, the budget. Oh, you want the, me to uh, read it in its entirety? Article article. Okay. Well, it's just that if I, there I are there questions on. It. I think if we summarize it, each, right. each warrant, that might be each warrant. Article, article 1 chooses a moderator to preside at a meeting. Article 2 is to elect the necessary town officials by secret yeah. ballot. And this is on the website. This is on the website. Yeah. And I, I, I don't Facebook. know where it is. I don't know where I looked on there today and I did not see it. I will put it back at the top of the page. Okay. Because we've added other things like municipal jobs and things. Okay. Article 3 Should any municipal budget question fail to pass, shall the town authorize the selectmen to expend an amount not to exceed three twelfths of the previous year appropriation? Article 4 Shall the town raise and appropriate the sum of 41000 for the office of the select board? Usually that's where we ask the audience if there are, does anyone have any question on Article 4? Does anybody that, I mean, that's, that's traditionally what's, except for one year. We got in big trouble for not doing I Last year we just read right through it. Yeah, but what people were, would ask if, if they, they stopped so that they would ask a question. There were only a couple questions. So if anybody has a question, do you want to just stop me as I'm going? Yeah. Yes. I think that might be. Yes. We'll, we'll recognize you immediately. Do that. Well, Bob will recognize you, and then I'll come in. Shall the town raise and appropriate the sum of 158545 for the office of the town manager? I'm not getting all that money. It's the office. <laughs> Six, shall the town raise and appropriate the sum of 100365 for the assessing department? Article 7, this would be raising $208,848 for finance and customer service. Article 8 would be raising $90,607 for the office of the town clerk. Article 9 is raising and appropriating the sum of $60,101 for the municipal building. Article 10 is... 812,764 for the emergency medical services. That's the EMS ambulance. Article 10 is shall the town raise and appropriate the sum of $170,049 for fire department. Article 12 is shall the town raise and appropriate the sum of $785,066 for the police department and that includes eight full-time officers and three shared employees. Article 13, shall the town raise and appropriate the sum of $40,106 for shellfish management program, one part-time employee, and this budget, again, is fully funded by license fees. No public funds are utilized. Article 14, 17720 for animal control, which is um, a service we've received through the county. Article 15, shall... This is for emergency management in the amount of $5,436. Article 16 is 88320 for fire hydrants. And that does reflect the increase in and the rates. And that reflects the increase in the rates. Yep. Article 17 is raising an appropriate $20,113 for street lights. And yes, Abdin, we are working on the LEDs. Um, 
Article 18, the town of raising and appropriating $848,377 for public works. Article 19, 10650 for parks and cemeteries. Um, for general assistance, Article 20, $22,730. Article 21, social service agencies, $15,424, and that would be the American Red Cross for $2,500. New Hope for Women, $1,572. Spectrum Generations, $4,222. $4 Elder Care Network of Lincoln County, $1,900. Mid Coast Maine Community Action, $2,000. And Healthy Kids, $3,230. Community Service Articles, $22. Um, Recreation Department, $82,614. Article 23, Friendship Street School, $14,737. Article 24, $95,104 for Community Service Agencies. And this would be Lincoln County TV, 9,000. Memorial Day, 1,000. Walderboro Day Committee, 1,000. Walderboro Public Library, 75,000. Walderboro Snow Crawler, 604. Walderboro Historical Society, 5,000. Waldo Theater, 2,500. And Oktoberfest, 1,000. And just to point out, the Waldo Theater was approved to 2,500. Their request was 5,000. That request for 5,000 will appear on the November ballot. For spending in 2021. For spending in 2021. Yep. Uh, Article 25, planning and development, 152,762. Insurance articles, um, property and liability risk pool, Article 26, $53,106. Article 27, debt service, 178,962. Transfer station fund, Article 28, $266,250. Article 29, capital reserve fund, $619,394. Um, and that is EMS equipment reserve, 12,000. Fire equipment reserve, 12,500. 12, Police re equipment reserve, 30,500. Public works equipment reserve, 112. $1,816. Surface Highway Program, $350,000. It used to be two fifty. dollars That's where that $100,000 comes in. Highway Construction Reserve, $50,000. Sidewalk Pro Program, $15,000. Computer Resources Reserve, $3,500. Trailer Reserve, $20,000. That's for solid waste. And other capital reserves, Marine Park Reserve, that's for the paving, $32,000. Article 30. Shall the town appropriate the sum of two thousand six hundred thirty-one thousand two million? Two million. That's right. Two million six hundred thirty-one thousand one hundred forty-two from the estimated revenues account to reduce the twenty twenty tax rate. So the lo local taxes are nine hundred eighty-four thousand forty-six. Licenses and permits sixty-five thousand four thirty-two. Intergovernmental revenues three hundred fifty-two thousand six hundred twenty-one. Charges for service eight hundred fourteen thousand one hundred eighty-one. Um, other revenues, $77,358, and other financing sources, $337,504. Article 31, shall, shall the town transfer the sum of $72,672 from the local road assistance block grant program to the general fund to be applied toward the transportation program? Um, Article 32, um, Again, that is what I spoke of. That is the firework ordinance to be null and void and replace it with one that prohibits sale, ownership, and discharge of consumer fireworks in Walderboro. Aerial fireworks display displays for public viewing set off by nonprofit organizations will be allowed between 8.30 p.m. and 10 p.m. on Walderboro Day, Memorial Day, Independence Day, and New Year's Eve by written permit. Um, Article 33 is an ordinance amending the Shelfist Conservation Ordinance to be enacted. A copy of the proposed ordinance is on file with the town clerk. Article 34 is an ordinance amending the land use, and this is addressing the shoreland zoning. Um, again, a copy of the ordinance is on file at the town clerk, and I'll put that one too. I think that one already is on the uh, website. Arthur has a question to ask. Yes. I guess I, I, I'm not sure what this means. The shoreland zoning? Yes. Max? Offices and from here. So, in our current land use ordinance, there are two articles that technically three articles that this would be affecting. Article 7 is shoreland zoning, Article 10 for non-conforming uses and definitions. So 
So what happened was the state has updated the language for shoreland zoning. This is about the 250 feet area from the normal high water tide line. Um, this is just relating to primarily timber harvesting and vegetation clearing that's near the water. Uh, a lot of the language that is being changed is just the state up is just the state updated language that you can't really change too much. Um, so is there any other is there a specific question I'm on? I just I was trying to understand just what this ordinance is directed for. This is primarily just talking about vegetation clearing within that 250, within that 250, foot, within 250 feet of water. Feet yeah. of water. Yeah. The 250 foot, is that, is that a change? Or has it always been 250 feet? It's been 250 feet from the normal high water line. So uh, if you were to go to um, just the water and see that dark area where the water constantly goes, right. and then see where it then splits to that dry, lighter color, that line that splits it, that's the normal high water line. Okay. And then 250 feet from there. Okay. But I think his question was, has that 250 feet always been there? Yes. That it has. It just clearing, cleaning up the language yeah. around the vegetation. Just tightening up the language in yeah. terms of. The, new, the newest additions is primarily about timber harvesting and vegetation clearing and removing of hazardous trees, because a lot of that was never addressed. So now that's just the new update to it. It's to conform our ordinance with that of the states. Yes. So that they're identical. They don't oppose one another. Okay. Yeah. Yep. Thank you. All right. Article 35 is um, for us to the town to implement the municipal development and tax increment financing district and development program for the district known as Walderboro Municipal Tax Increment Financing District. Article 36 is, shall the town vote to fix the 15th day of November 2019 and the 15th day of May 2020 when all 2020 taxes shall be due and payable in semi-annual installments and to instruct the tax collector to charge interest at 9% per annum on all taxes unpaid after said date. Article 37, shall the town vote to pay interest at 3% annum on any amount overpaid on property taxes. Article 38 is, shall the town vote to authorize the tax collector to offer a 2020 tax club plan to taxpayers who enroll no later than July 31st, 2019, who pay the total amount of 2020 taxes by monthly payments from July 2019 to June 30, 2020, who abide by the requirements of said plan. Article 39, shall the town vote to authorize the, the Board of Selectmen on behalf of the town to sell and dispose of real estate acquired by town for non-payment of taxes. Article 40, shall the town authorize the transfer of all unexpended balances to fund balance and authorize the overdrafts that may occur in the town operations in the 2019 budget to be taken from fund balance. 41 is, shall the town authorize the Board of Selectmen and Treasurer on behalf of the town to accept gifts, real estate, and certain funds, including trust funds that may be left or given to the town. Article 42, authorizes the Treasurer to waive the foreclosure of tax lien mortgages pursuant to MRS 36 MRSA 944 upon finding by the Board of Selectmen that ownership of the proper property subject to lien would be contrary to the town's best interest. Article 43, shall the town authorize the Board of Selectmen to enter into boundary line agreements with the budding property owners to establish boundary line of any property in town, including the boundary lines of rights away. Article 44, shall the town authorize the Board of Selectmen to make final determinations regarding the closing or opening of roads to winter maintenance. And Article 45, shall the town authorize the Board of Selectmen to spend funds from various reserve funds as it deems necessary in accordance with the Capital Improvement Program. And final, Article 46, shall the town authorize the Board of Selectmen to notify the Commissioner of Department of Marine Resources that it wishes to exercise its rights to alewives in the Madomic River for the year 2020. And yes, we do. <laughs> that concludes the reading of the town warrant for 2020. Are there any other questions or comments? I would just like to make a comment. When we were going through the, um, this process with the department heads, um, I'll take, for instance, uh, the, the um, John Daigle's Public Works. Public Works. He explained it to us, to me especially, that I understood what he was saying. So 
if if you have any questions about why things are so high or look so high, he's got a reason for it. And sometimes he'll take money and he'll put it aside as a savings account so that he can buy the equipment that he needs. So it might look huge in here, but actually he's got it saved out. Am I saying this right? I guess I'm not. That's no. the way I understood it. Well, well it's, the... it's already in a capital fund. It's not, well, so the savings aren't reflected in the budget. Okay, but the, if you have questions about any of these department heads, see one of us or Julie or, or even make an appointment with the department head, I guess, mm -hmm. and find out for sure before you vote, go and ask about this before you vote and they could explain it to you. At least I thought it was good. It is good, but I just, I don't want people to think that. But I know, but it's, it, it's, it's already saved, so it's not reflected in the budget. I know, and we, and we brought this up to John Daigle especially. I said, you need to tell, tell this to the public because it, so, it was so clear to me and one other person on the budget committee that, uh, you know, I, I think it, it would be in your best interest to ask before you vote. Thank you. Thank and on you. that note, I have to go. <laughs> have a good meeting. We have a latecomer. Otto. How are we doing? Any more comments from the board or from the audience? Comments from the audience? Questions? I think we're done with the hearing. Is there a motion to adjourn the hearing? So moved. Is there a second? Second. All in favor of adjourning. <laughs> <laughs> I thought it started. <laughs>